Hi Lions, thanks for joining me for another lesson. We are going to practice our heart words um, and then we will practice spelling and then reading a story that has the sounds we've learned so far as well as the sight words or heart words we've learned. Okay, and this practice is going to help us to become automatic when we read and then automatic when we're spelling as well. All right, let's get started. The first two heart words are the words that we learned yesterday. The first one is what. Let's spell it. W-H-A-T, what. Do, spell, D-O, read, do. Remember, you need to read, spell, read with me. So I need to hear you, lions. Our next word, isn't. Spell it. I-S in apostrophe T isn't. And this, of course, is a contraction. A contraction is when you take two small words and you put them together. So it's making it um, an even faster or smaller way of saying something. So this is short for is not. Isn't means the same thing as is not. Okay. And then the next, another contraction, can't. Spell it. C-A-N apostrophe T. Can't. This is a shorter way of saying can not. Can't. My. M-Y. My. Because remember when we have Y at the end of a small word or a single syllable word, it says I. Yes. Y-E-S. Yes. Two. T-O-2. -O and. A-N-D. And. Where. W-H-E-R-E. -E, where. The. T-H-E, the, <clears throat> get, G-E-T, get. Okay, we're going to go ahead and practice our spelling now. So if you need to get a paper and pencil, you can pause the video. And for everyone else, we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, the first word we're going to spell is top, top. We always put our name at the top of our paper. Sound it. Up, top. So the first sound t is like the tick tock clock. T, the letter T. T, ah. I hear the octopus sound, which is the letter O. T, ah. P, p. I hear the padding pizza sound, which is the letter P. So we make a stick and then a circle for the top P. T up. So the T goes to the top line and the P goes down below the baseline. So it's a basement letter. That's what some people call it because it's going down into the basement. Okay, the next word is pat. Sometimes you pat out a beat when you're a musical music class. Let's sound it. P at pat. P up oh, just like the patting pizza. So we have the letter P. P, P. So P. P. Ah. I hear the apple sound, which is the letter A. P. Ah. P. At. The tick tock clock. So the letter T, pat. So the P, of course, goes down below the baseline. It's a basement letter. The T goes to the top line. The A goes to the midline, pat. The next word is sad. S ad, sad. So the first sound we hear is s like the hissing snake. So that's the letter S. S -a. I hear the A sound like the apple, which is the A. S -a -d -d. I hear the D sound like the letter D, the digging dog. Remember the D, you're going to first make the circle and then the stick. 
Some people confuse that with another letter. Sad, circle, and then the stick. Sad. And the D goes to the top line. The S and A just go to the midline. The next word is hits. Let's sound it. It hits. Now I hear an ending. The base word is hit. So let's spell the base word first. So we've been talking a lot about base words and a suffix. When you're trying to spell a word with a suffix, it's helpful to just spell the base word first and then add the suffix. So let's spell hit first. It hit. So like the huffing horse. So that, where's our huffing horse? There it is. So that's the letter H. <sighs> that's that itch sound, which is the letter I. <sighs> it. I hear the tick tock clock, which is the letter T. So let's look at the word hit. <sighs> it. Now we want to spell hits. So let's listen to what we hear at the end of hit. I hear the s sound like the hissing snake, which is an S. So we'll add S to the end, hits. So when you're spelling a word that has a suffix on it, first spell the base word. And that's the word without any extra endings on it. And that will help you. Okay, the next word we're going to spell is Bad, bad, b, ad, bad. So b, like the batting ball. That's the letter B. So make your stick first and then the circle. B, b. And I'm going to show you my B. We want to make sure we practice B going in the right direction right from the beginning. Okay. B, ad. I hear the apple which is the letter A, B, A, D, D. I hear the digging dog, which is the letter D. So this time you're going to make your circle and then your stick. Circle, stick, bad. Good job. And if you ever make your Bs or Ds the, um, the wrong direction, it's okay. A lot of people do that when they're first writing letters. What you want to do, though, is erase it and make it go in the right direction. Because if you don't fix it, then your brain will start to remember it going in the wrong direction. And then it becomes really hard to fix it later. So, um, But a lot of people confuse that when they're first learning to write. Okay. Now, the next word we're going to spell is pan. I have a pan I need to wash after this lesson. P and pan. So P, we hear the padding pizza letter, which is a P. P. Remember, that's a basement letter, so it goes down below the line. P and so we hear the apple sound, which is an A. P and like nose noise, which is an N. Pan. Okay, two words left to spell, and they are heart words. So the first one is, hmm, actually, we're just going to, oh, here it is. They. T-H-E-Y, they. So as you spell this word, I want you to say the letters out loud. T-H-E-Y, they. And if you forget how to spell it, you can remember it has the at the beginning of it. They. It's the with the Y at the end. Okay, so it should look like this. The T and H go to the top line and the Y goes down below. It's a basement letter. Okay, and then the last word we're gonna spell is get. Spell it, 
G-E-T, get. Go ahead and spell that on your paper and say the letters as you write them. G-E-T, get. So G is a basement letter. It goes down below the baseline. E goes to the midline and T goes to the top. And then you cross the T at the midline. Okay, last thing we're gonna do is read a story that has the sounds and words that we've learned in it. Remember, if it's underlined, we read it automatically because that's a heart word. If it's not, then we're gonna stretch out the sounds and then we're gonna read it again um, when we have to take the time to stretch out sounds because in that way we can pay attention to what the story is about rather than just trying to figure out the word. And um, we want to pay attention to punctuation as well. It's also a good idea, guys, when I hold the page up, pause it and try to read it at your own pace for the first time. Okay, here we go. What did they do? What did they do? Oh boy, I hope they're not in trouble. Could be something good. Maybe they did something good. What did Sam and Ann do? They ran and ran. What did Sam and Ann do? They ran and ran. That looks like fun. And do you notice that, that Sam has a capital S and Ann has a capital A? When we are writing names, the first letter in a name is always a capital letter. So that's something for you to remember when you're writing yourself. Where did Ann and Sam run? They ran to the rock. Where did Ann and Sam run? They ran to the rock. What did Anne put on? She put on a cap. What did Anne put on? She put on a cap. Did Sam put his cap on Riff? Yes, but it didn't, didn't fit. Did Sam put his cap on Riff? Yes, but it didn't fit. Where did Riff go? He ran to get a stick. Where did Riff go? He ran to get a stick. Sounds like my dog Daisy. Did Sam's cap fall off? Yes, it is on the mop. Did Sam's cap fall off? Yes. It is on the mop. Now look at the word Sam's. You see the apostrophe S? So this apostrophe S is showing that ownership. So something belongs to Sam. So I'm going to reread this sentence and I want you to think what belongs to Sam? Did Sam's cap fall off? So what was the thing that belonged to Sam? It's his cap. So when you see apostrophe S, that's showing that something belongs to the person in the story. What did dad do? He sat and had a nap in the sun. What did dad do? He sat and had a nap in the sun. That sounds wonderful. 
Where was mom? She sat by Riff down at the pond. Where was mom? She sat by Riff down at the pond. That sounds nice. All right, guys, I just want to remind you of two things. One is don't forget when you see an apostrophe S, that's showing ownership. That means something belongs to a person in the story. And then also names. So like dad and Sam and Riff, names have capital letters. So we want to make sure that we use capital letters in our own writing. And if you're talking about something belonging to somebody in a story, um, then don't forget to use capital apostrophe s just like here in sam's all right lions we will pick up here tomorrow and we will learn some new sounds that we can add to our board back here and that we can practice reading and spelling all right have a great day bye lions